Once you've set up your survey, the next step is to share it out and get responses. And I'm going to show you three ways that you can distribute your survey and get responses even if you don't have an audience whatsoever. So to send out your survey, you can come up and click on send. And the first way that you can send this out is by email. Now you can just type in some email addresses directly here and send it straight out if you want. If you have an email list and you're using an email marketing tool like MailChimp, you can just write an email, tell your audience you know, the benefit of filling the site, paste that link in and send that directly from MailChimp or whatever email marketing service you're using. But what if you don't have uh, an audience built up yet? What can you really do? Well, what I would recommend is that you start to look and think about what are the contacts that you already have available to you. And one thing that you can do is go ahead and export your contacts from Gmail or Yahoo or whatever email service you're using for your personal mail. Now, I went ahead and did this recently and I was shocked to see that I had over 800 emails in my Gmail. Now, am I saying that you should go ahead and just spam everybody in your inbox with your survey? No, I'm absolutely not saying you should do that. What I am saying is once you export your Gmail contacts, you're going to get an Excel sheet full of all of your contacts. And I would go down through one, each person one by one and say, you know, would, would this really help them? Or would they even know somebody that they could forward this on to? And I guarantee you're going to get 10 to 15 people at least out of your contacts that you can send the email directly to. Now, where else might you have email addresses just from your normal connections that you've made? Well, LinkedIn is another place and you can export all your connections from LinkedIn. Again, this is going to produce a huge uh, Excel sheet full of people's names, first name, last name and email address. It's like having your own email list uh, before you even have a website or anything. So once again, I'm not saying you should spam everybody. I'm saying you probably have people in your contacts already on Gmail or LinkedIn that you can send the survey directly out to. And if not, you're going to have at least one person who knows where you should be sending this email to. Maybe they know certain Facebook groups, etc. that you should post in. So that was the first way to share your survey email. Now there is one important point that I want to stress about email and that is the subject line. You can see by default here, the subject line is I've invited you to fill in a form. Now how many people do you think are going to open that if they see that in their inbox? Probably none. They're not even going to they're just going to skip on over the email and won't even read it. So that's why the subject line is so critical for emails because if they don't click to open your email, they're never going to click the link to fill out your survey. So you must write something compelling here in the subject line. Now, if you leave this by default, that's not going to work. Even if you change it to something like, can you spare a few minutes and fill in my survey? that's not going to work either. Why? Because there's no benefit to the customer or the potential customer. Can I spare? Can you spare a few minutes? What's the benefit for me? I'm not going to open that. Sorry. So you need to come up with something that's going to get people to open. Now, if you have an audience, something that I've done before is saying, you know, I'm creating, I'm creating new courses for you, or I'm creating a new course makes it sound even more specific. For you and I love your input. So you can see the benefit here is that I'm creating something for them already and it's going to be a course so they know what you know the product is and it's for them and I'm just asking for their feedback and people will happily give their feedback because they want to solve their own problems and they're going to help you solve their your you know their problems. So there's a clear benefit for them is what I'm trying to say. Now, another thing that if you don't have an audience, how are you going to catch their attention? Well, I'll tell you one subject line that actually caught my attention very recently. Hey, Dara, uh, could I try to solve your problems as an online instructor? So this was actually an email that just someone sent me and I opened it 
And the reason was because they didn't say, can you fill out my survey? They said, could I try to solve your problems? They didn't guarantee that they were going to. And that kind of hints at that they're gathering some feedback. And they specifically said as an online instructor. So they had taken the time to actually figure out what I do and they want to help solve my problems. And I can tell you as an online instructor, I have a lot of problems, a lot of things that are difficult to do. And if someone can help me with that, well, then I'm going to open the email. So that is something that you could easily copy and use for whatever your thing is. Hey, could I try to solve your problems and um, to become financially independent? Could I try and solve your problems to, you know, whatever with Adobe effects, whatever it is, you can really copy and paste that in. And I guarantee you're going to get a lot of people opening your email and responding to it. Okay, so that wraps up email as the first way to distribute your survey. I've talked about ways to do it if you have an audience and if you don't have an audience. Now, the next way to collect responses is through social media. Again, if you have an audience, you can just share out the links directly there. And if you don't have an audience, what are you going to do? Well, there is the magic of Facebook groups. So all you want to do is type in your keyword or your topic or your niche in here. So let's just say something like, you know, financial independence. This is something I'm interested in and come across and let's look at the groups here. So if I had some sort of solution or I was a coach to help people become financially independent, I would be posting my survey into these groups and uh, getting some responses from them. Now, what you can also do is this really works for any different type of niche, you know, vegans, Dublin vegans. There's thousands of people in these groups. And remember that you'll probably have to join the group. That might take a day or two to get approved. And then once you're in the group, you just want to have a look and um, check out the group rules. So let's have a look at these for this one. You know, don't give out personal details, etc. Let's see, let's see. So you want to read the, these rules just quickly for any group because you don't want to be banned from the group or you don't want to kind of upset the atmosphere that they've created in there. So some groups, for example, they only allowed you to post links on a certain day. And so you just respect that and wait for that day and post the survey in then. So as well as Facebook groups, there are also groups on LinkedIn. So let's just quickly head over there. And again, it's the same thing that you want to do. Not just put a link to your survey in there and say, fill this out and help me. You want to say, hey, guys, I'm curious what your biggest problems are as, say, vegans in Dublin. And, uh, you know, fill out my survey below. I'm happy to share the results and let's brainstorm some solutions to them. That's something very positive. You're there to help them. And again, you're not just there to uh, really, you know, get their money and run off into the sunset or whatever you want to do. Now, LinkedIn is an opening for me, but it's the very same process over there. Now, let's look at the final way that you can go ahead and um, get responses to your survey, and that's to use forums. So all you need to do is once again, tie, go to Google, type in whatever your niche or keyword is, and then just put forum there and up is going to pop up a lot of forums. This really works for anything. It, you know, any different niches that you have, you can see there's a lot of them here. Even you can go into Reddit and things like that. Um, and so forums are just another place that you can post your survey and get responses. The people are out there already. And so you might not be able to post it into one Facebook group or one LinkedIn group, or maybe someone will delete your posts. That's going to probably happen. But there are thousands of groups across all those three methods that I've showed you. So you are going to get responses to your survey um, if you just stick with it. So to recap, we've looked at three different ways to distribute your survey, even if you don't have an audience email. So to recap, we've looked at three different ways to distribute your survey and get responses, even if you don't have a survey. 
and we talked about some tips and tricks in, in terms of really getting responses and that's your subject line and the way that you post it into those different social media groups.